Last Mark II, in fact. We're making a copy from our original blueprints. Original blueprints? Are you trying to tell me you made the Earth? Oh, yes. Did you ever go to a place? I think it was called Norway. No, no, I didn't. Pity, that was one of mine. Won an award, you know. Lovely, crinkly edges. I was terribly sorry to hear it had been destroyed. You were? Five minutes too early. What? Shocking cock up. The mice were furious. The mice were furious? Yes. Oh, yes, well, so I expect with the dogs and cats and duck-billed platypuses. But really, I oh, don't see they what... weren't running the planet, were they? No, but I... And the mice were. Ah. So they were rather upset that it was destroyed five minutes too early, so we've got to build another one. Sorry. Are we talking about the little white furry things with the cheese fixation and, and women standing screaming on tables in early 60s sitcoms? Earth man, it is sometimes hard to follow your mode of speech. Remember, I have been asleep inside this planet of Magrasia for five million years and know little of these early 60s sitcoms of which you speak. But these creatures you call mice are merely the protrusion into our dimension of vast, hyper-intelligent, pan-dimensional beings. The whole business with the cheese and the squeaking is just a front. Uh, they've been experimenting on you, I'm afraid. No, 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 come on, that's the wrong way round. We used to experiment on them. You know, behavioural research and so on. Such subtlety, such subtlety. What? How better to disguise their real natures and how better to guide your thinking? Suddenly running out the maze the wrong way, eating the wrong bit of cheese, unexpectedly dropping dead of mix of matuses. <laughs> Earthman, I'm afraid I must tell you that your planet of people have formed the matrix of an organic computer running a 10 million year research program to find the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Oh. You see, they really are particularly clever, hyper-intelligent, pan-dimensional beings. Attention, please, slightly broadcast. The mice have received reports that you have a human from the planet Earth with you. Report immediately. Report immediately. However, in the field of management relations, they're absolutely shocking. Really? Yes, you uh, see, well, every time they give me an order, I just want to jump on a table and scream. See, that would be a problem. There are, of course, many problems connected with life, of which some of the most popular are why are people born, why do they die, and why do they want to spend so much of the intervening time wearing digital watches. Many millions of years ago, a race of hyper-intelligent pan-dimensional beings got so fed up with all the constant bickering about the meaning of life, which used to interrupt their favorite pastime of Brockian ultra cricket, a curious game which involved suddenly hitting people for no readily apparent reason and running away, that they decided to sit down and solve the problem once and for all. And to this end, they built themselves a stupendous supercomputer which was so amazingly intelligent that even before its data banks had been connected up, it had started from first principles with I think, therefore I am, and had got as far as deducing the existence of rice pudding and income tax before anyone managed to turn it off. Could a mere computer solve the problem of life, the universe and everything? Fortunately for posterity, there exists this recording of what happened when the computer was given its monumental task. What is this great task for which I, Deep Thought, the second greatest computer in the universe of time and space, have been called into existence? Oh, Deep Thought computer, the task we have designed you to perform is this. We want you to tell us the answer. The answer? The answer to what? Life. The universe. Everything. Hmm. Tricky. But can you do it? Yes, I can do it. There is an answer? A simple answer? Yes. Life, the universe, and everything. There is an answer. But I'll have to think about it. What's happening out there? We demand that this one you can't keep us out. We demand that you can't keep us out. Who are you? What do you want? I am Magic Thighs. And I demand that I am Broom Fungal. It's all right, you don't need to demand that. Sorry. All right, I am Broom Fungal, and that is not a demand. That is a solid fact. What we demand is solid facts. No, we don't. That is precisely what we don't demand. Sorry, sorry. We don't demand solid facts. Right. What we demand is a total absence of solid facts. I demand that I may or may not be 
Room Van Gogh. Look, but who are you anyway? We are philosophers, though we may not be. Yes, we are. And we're quite definitely here as representatives of the amalgamated union of philosophers, sages, luminaries, and other professional thinking persons. And we want this machine off, and we want it off now. What is all this? We demand that you get rid of it. What's the problem? I'll tell you what the problem is. Demarcation, that's the problem. We demand that demarcation may or may not be the problem. You'll just let the machines get on with the adding up, and we'll take care of the eternal verities. Thank you very much. Ah, yeah. Under law, the quest for ultimate truth is quite clearly the prerogative of your working thinkers. Right. She goes and actually finds it and we're straight out of a job, aren't we? I mean, well, what's the use of our sitting up all night saying they may or, or may not or be or may not be a job if this machine gives us telephone number the next morning? We demand guaranteed, rigidly defined areas of doubt and uncertainty. Might I make an observation at this point? You keep out of this metal nose! We demand that that machine not be allowed to think about this problem! All I wanted to say... We'll go on strike! That's right! You'll have a national philosopher's strike on your hands! Whom will that inconvenience? Never you mind who it will inconvenience, you box of black-legging binary bits! Right. It'll hurt, Buster! It'll hurt! There is no terror, your threats! Oh. All I wanted to say is that I am now irrevocably committed to computing the answer to life the universe and everything, but the program will take me seven and a half million years to run. Seven and a half million years? And it occurs to me that running a program like this is bound to cause sensational public interest. And so any philosophers, such as perhaps yourselves, who are quick off the mark, are going to clean up in the prediction business. Just get on the pundit circuit. You all go on the chat shows and the color supplements and violently disagree with each other about what answer I'm eventually going to produce. And if you get yourselves clever agents, you'll be on the gravy train for life. Bloody hell. Now that's what I call thinking. Here, Fluent Fondel, why do we never think of things like that? I don't know. I think our minds must be too highly trained for Jake Dyes. Oh, yeah. And so, Vroom Fondel and Magic Thighs became the greatest and most truly interesting pundits the universe had ever known. And thousands upon thousands of generations later, the great day for which this race of hyper-intelligent, pan-dimensional beings had waited, somewhat impatiently, dawned. All oh, people who wait in the shadow of deep thought, honored descendants of Vroom Fondel and Magic Thighs, the time of waiting is over. Seven and a half million years our race has waited for this great and hopefully enlightening day, the day of the answer. Never again will we wake up in the morning and think, who am I? What is my purpose in life? Does it really, cosmically speaking, matter if I don't get up and go to work? For today, we will finally learn once and for all the plain and simple answer to all these nagging little problems of life, the universe, and everything. From today, we can enjoy our games of rocky and ultra cricket in the firm and comfortable knowledge that the meaning of life is now well and truly sorted out. The time is nearly upon us. I detect a change in the computer. It's suddenly looking a lot more relaxed. 75,000 generations ago, our ancestors set this program in motion. In all that time, we will be the first to hear the computer speak. Oh, an awesome prospect. We are the ones who will hear the answer to the great question of life. The universe. And everything. <coughs> Deep thought prepares to speak. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Deep Thought, do you have... Have you a... That, that is a... An answer for you? Yes. Yes, I have. There really is one? There really is one. To everything? To the great question of life, the universe, and everything? Yes. And are you ready to give it to us? I am. Now? Now. Wow. Though I don't think you're going to like it. Doesn't matter, we must know it. Now. 
Now. Yes, now. All right. Well? You're really not going to like it. Tell us. All right. The answer to everything. Yes. Life, the universe, and everything. Yes. Is. Yes. Is. Yes. Forty-two. We're going to get lynched, you know that. It was a tough assignment. Forty-two. May I be permitted to make an observation? Seven and a half million years' work. I checked it very thoroughly, and that definitely is the answer. I think the problem, essentially, is that you've never actually said what the question is. But it was the ultimate question, the question of life, the universe, of everything. Yes, but what actually is it? Well, uh, I mean, you know, why is... Uh, what? Um, what sort of... Uh, where? Uh, when... Uh, everything. everything. Just, just everything, everything, you know. Exactly. Now, once you know what the question actually is, You'll know what the answer means. Oh, Look, all right, all right. Now, now, can you please tell us the question? The ultimate question? Yes. Of life, the universe, and everything? Yes. Hmm. Tricky. But can you do it? No. Oh. But I'll tell you who can. But who, oh, please, please tell, tell us, please. I speak of the computer that is to come after me. A computer whose merest operational parameters I am not worthy to calculate. And yet, I will design it for you. A computer to calculate the ultimate question. A computer of such infinite and subtle complexity that organic life itself shall form part of its operational matrix. And you yourself shall take on the forms of humble rodents and go down into the computer. This is getting needlessly messy, Alan. Down! Down! To navigate its ten million year program. Yes, I shall design this computer for you and I shall name it also unto you. And it shall be called the Earth. Yes. Oh, what a dull name. Must awake, awake. Wake, wake up. up. Where am I? You have been in a deep trance, absorbing data from the Magrathian Compu Matrix archive cells. Oh, of course. Come. You are to meet your masters. Your arrival on our planet has caused considerable excitement. It has already been hailed as the third most improbable event in the history of the universe. What were the first two? Oh, probably just coincidences. But was that all true? That the Earth was just a huge computer? Yes, and it was destroyed by the Vogons five minutes before the ten million year program was completed. Well, that's bureaucracy for you. But, you know, that would explain a lot of things. All through my life, I've had this strange, unaccountable feeling that something secret, something sinister was going on in the world, and no one would tell me what it was. Oh, that's just perfectly normal paranoia. Everyone in the universe has that. Well, well, perhaps that means that somewhere outside even the universe, on the next scale up... Maybe. Some... Who cares? Perhaps I'm old and tired, but I always think the chances of finding out what really is going on are so absurdly remote that the only thing to do is say... Hang the sense of it and just keep yourself occupied. Look at me. I designed coastlines. I got an award for Norway. Where's the sense in that? None that I've been able to make out. I've been doing fjords all my life. For a fleeting moment, they become fashionable. I get a major award. In this replacement Earth, we're building there, giving me Africa to do. And of course, I, I'm doing it with all fjords again because I happen to like them. And I'm old-fashioned enough to think that they give a lovely Baroque feel to a continent. And they tell me it's not equatorial enough. Well, what does it matter? Science has achieved some wonderful things, of course, but I'd far rather be happy than right any day. And are you? No. That's where it all falls down, of course. 
It sounded like quite a good lifestyle otherwise. Attention, please, Slarty Bart Fast. With Slarty Bart Fast and the visiting Earth creature, please report to the mice in the works reception area immediately. I seem to be having this tremendous difficulty with my lifestyle. Beg your pardon? I'm sorry, that must seem an awfully fatuous thing to say. Yes, I thought so. It's just that I find it a bit hard to relate to all this. It is, of course, well known that careless talk costs lives, but the full scale of the problem is not always appreciated. For instance, at the very moment that Arthur said, I seem to be having this tremendous difficulty with my lifestyle, a freak wormhole opened up in the fabric of the space-time continuum and carried his words far, far back in time across almost infinite reaches of space to a distant galaxy where strange and warlike beings were poised on the brink of frightful interstellar battle. The two opposing leaders were meeting for the last time, and a dreadful silence fell across the conference table as the commander of the Vlahergs, resplendent in his black jeweled battle shorts, gazed levelly at the Gagugvant leader squatting opposite him in a cloud of green, sweet-smelling steam and with a million sleek and horribly beweaponed star cruisers poised to unleash electric death at his single word of command, challenged the vile creature to take back what it had said about his mother. The creature stirred in his sickly, broiling vapor, and at that very moment the words, I seem to be having this tremendous difficulty with my lifestyle, drifted across the conference table. Unfortunately, in the Vlaherd tongue, this was the most dreadful insult imaginable, and there was nothing for it but to wage terrible war. Eventually, after their galaxy had been decimated, it was realized that the whole thing had been a ghastly mistake, and so the two opposing battle fleets settled their few remaining differences in order to launch a joint attack on our galaxy, now positively identified as the source of the offending remark. For thousands more years, the mighty ships tore across the empty wastes of space and finally dived screaming onto the planet Earth, where, due to a terrible miscalculation of scale, the entire battle fleet was accidentally swallowed by a small dog. Those who study the complex interplay of cause and effect in the history of the universe say that this sort of thing is going on all the time, but are powerless to prevent it. It's just life, they say. Meanwhile, Arthur Dent has been escorted to the Magrathian Works reception area for a shatteringly odd meeting. Arthur, you're safe! Am I? Oh, good. Hi, Arthur, come and join us. Ford, Trillian, Zaphod, what happened to you? Well, our hosts here. Hosts? What hosts? Welcome to lunch, Arthur. What? Who said that? Oh, there's a mouse on the table. Oh, well, haven't you found out yet? What? Oh, oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, yes, I, I just wasn't quite prepared for the full reality of it. Arthur, this is Benji Mouse. And this is Frankie Mouse. Nice to meet you. Excuse me. Yes, thank you, Slotty Bobfast. You may go. What? Uh, oh. Oh. Very well. Thank you, sir. I'll, um... I'll, I'll just go and get on with some of my thoughts. Uh, in fact, that won't be necessary. We won't be requiring the new Earth after all. We had this rather interesting proposition put to us. What? You, can, you can't mean that. I've got a thousand plus years poised and ready to roll over Africa. Well, perhaps you can take a quick skiing holiday before you dismantle them. Skiing holiday? Those glaciers are works of art. Elegantly sculpted contours, soaring pinnacles of ice, deep, majestic ravines. It would be sacrilege to go skiing on high art. Thank you, Slarty Bartfast. That will be all. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Well, goodbye, Earthman. Hope the lifestyle comes to you. What? Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, goodbye, then. Sorry about the fjords. No, Earth creature. As you've gathered, we've been at this ultimate question business now for 17 and a half million years. Oh, longer, surely. No, no, it just seems longer. Mm. And then, just as we're about to get somewhere, you go and let your wretched planet get blown up, and, well, we're sick to death of the whole thing, to be honest. Well, it's hardly my fault. Yes, we appreciate that. The point is that we need a question. At least a question. And we can either do the whole thing all over again. God forbid. Oh. You see, 
the thing is, we've been offered an enormous contract to do the 5D TV chat show and lecture set. What? But we've got to have a strong product. You see, Monkey Man, it's they're just sitting there in the studio looking very relaxed and just, you know, mentioning that they happen to know the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything, and then eventually have to admit that in fact it's 42, then I think the show's probably quite short. Right. Yeah. No follow-up, you see. We've got to have something that sounds good. Something that sounds good? An ultimate question that sounds good? Well, I mean, yes, idealism. Yes, the dignity of pure research. Yes, the pursuit of truth in all its forms. But there comes a point, I'm afraid, where you begin to suspect that if there's any real truth, Hey, get this, will you, Earthman? You are a last generation product of that computer matrix, right? And you were there right up to the moment your planet got the finger, yeah? Uh, yes. So I your brain that's was good. an organic part of the penultimate configuration of the computer program. Right? Well, yes, but I don't quite see what this is. <laughs> Who's going to miss it? Thank you very much. I thought you said you could just read his brain electronically. Yes, but we've got to get it out first. It's got to be prepared, treated, guys. Thank you. Arthur! Hey, come on, guys. I mean, hey! It can be replaced, you know, if you think it's that important. An electronic brain. A simple one should suffice. A simple one? Yeah, it can be programmed to say what? Uh, I don't understand, and where's the T? I don't know the difference. What? See what I mean? I'd notice the difference. No, you wouldn't. You'd be programmed not to. Look, I'm sorry, my soul, lads. I don't think we've got a deal. Emergency, emergency. Hostile ship has landed on planet. The intruders now with the works reception area. Defense station. Defense station. What is it now? That's doozy. It'll be galactic police. We've got to go bush. Police? Yes, we're in a stolen spacecraft. Improbability drive ship. Ah, so that's how the Earth man got here. Didn't you even know it's explaining how they could make a profit on the insurance deal? Yeah, it doesn't seem to have worked. Come on, then, let's move. Damn, why all that fuss over two pounds of earth blue grain? We're going to have to invent a question. Mm. What's yellow and dirty? Yes, yellow and dirty. 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 Yes
done to these people, Broxton, you better listen good. Why? Because it's gonna be very intelligent and quite interesting and humane. Okay, far away! I mean... The computer bank is absorbing a hell of a lot of energy. My thing's about to explode. Well, that about wraps it up for this lifetime. Well, it's been really nice running into you again, Zaphod. Zaglabos, real true to It is, of course, more or less at this misleading point that this part of our story ends. Though it is in many ways a remarkable story, contains much that is apocryphal, or at least wildly inaccurate, is reasonably cheap, and has the words Don't Panic written in large, friendly letters on the cover, it is not, of course, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy itself. To obtain your copy of the actual guide, please write to Megadodo Publications, Megadodo House, Ursa Minor Beta, enclosing £4.95 p for the book and £578,000 million, postage and packing. <laughs>